Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's community meeting regarding uh, proposed amendments to the sign ordinance and the City of Gateways Design Master Plan for digital freeway billboards. Um, it's six o'clock now, uh, so we're going to get started in a few minutes uh, to allow people who are running late or who are having difficulties uh, time to be able to log on. I do want to note that this meeting is being recorded so that folks can who are a, unable to attend the meeting or who want to refer back to the meeting can view it at a later date. Um, but yeah, we're going to start the meeting in a few minutes, so please hang tight. Okay, so 6.03, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, thank you all for attending today's community meeting regarding proposed amendments to the sign ordinance and to the City Gateways Design Master Plan related to digital freeway billboards. Um, this meeting is really intended to help us introduce those amendments to the community and to get your feedback. So tonight, we're going to start off with some introductions from city staff who are here at today's meeting. We'll then go into the purpose of today's community meeting, followed by some background about this project and why the city is really embarking on this effort. We'll then go through a series of discussion regarding the proposed amendments to the sign ordinance and the city gateways design master plan. And then we'll let you all know uh, a little bit about the upcoming next steps, followed by a period of time for you all to ask questions and provide us with your feedback. So to start off with introductions, my name is Noah Rambala. I'm an assistant planner with the Vacaville Planning Division. And with me tonight, we also have Albert Eno, our senior planner, Amon Bevend, our planning manager, and then Kristen Pollitt, who is our assistant director of community development. And tonight's community meeting, again, is to formally introduce the proposed amendments to the sign ordinance and also to the City Gateways Design Master Plan specifically as they relate to digital freeway billboards. We're hoping to uh, provide an opportunity for the community to really give feedback and ask questions about the project. And then also uh, let you all know about the upcoming next steps for uh, this project. So this all started in March of 2023 when we received an application from a company called Clear Channel Outdoor. Uh, and they requested to convert an existing billboard to a digital freeway billboard. And this existing static or standard billboard is located along eastbound Interstate 80, headed towards Sacramento, north of Kilkenny Road. And upon reviewing the application, city staff determined that under the current sign ordinance, digital freeway billboards are not uh, currently allowed, and that an amendment to our zoning ordinance, to our sign ordinance specifically, uh, would be required. 
And so in August of last year, we took the uh, we took the whole idea of digital freeway billboards to the city council to really get their feedback about this major policy decision and whether or not they want to embark on allowing digital freeway billboards in Vacaville. And in December of 2023, the city council initiated a zoning amendment, uh, basically directing staff to draft amendments to create standards and procedures and regulations for new digital freeway billboards in Vacaville. And these types of regulations include location restrictions, uh, requirements for removal of static or standard billboards, uh, development and design standards, performance standards, and then also what the proposed review process for future proposals would be. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what the proposed amendments actually entail. To start off, we're going to look at uh, some of the proposed location restrictions under the draft sign ordinance amendments new digital freeway billboards following city council direction would only be permitted along the freeway in two areas. On Interstate 80, it would be in what's called the Northeast Growth Area. And this is the area between Leisure Town Road and Midway Road. And then along Interstate 505, but only the portion that is north of Vaca Valley Parkway and west of Interstate 505. The, sign or the proposed amendments to the signed ordinance also have static billboard removal requirements. Currently, there's about 16 existing static or standard billboards in Vacaville. And so uh, any future digital freeway billboard proposals would require that um, either three static or standard billboard structures be removed or four billboard sign faces be removed, whichever is greater among the two. And the purpose of this uh, option is to provide flexibility for future uh, applicants who may have varying assets in Vacaville. Uh, in response to stakeholder feedback, the proposed amendments also include an in lieu option. And this is basically to allow future applicants who don't have enough billboards to remove to provide offsetting benefits, such as monetary con contributions or community benefits, such as additional funding for parks, or for infrastructure or other types of community improvements. The amendments also have development standards that require placemaking and welcome uh, verbiage, such as the words Vacaville or city of Vacaville or the city logo. Uh, the structure of the billboard itself must also have specific designs that are uh, reflective of Vacaville theming, such as the Golden Hills or biotechnology or agriculture. Um, and then, of course, there's some development standards, such as the height may not exceed 65 feet. There must be uh, 1,500 foot separation between digital freeway billboards. And then um, there also must be landscaping around the base of the billboard structure itself. And these standards apply in addition to requirements and regulations that the state of California through Caltrans uh, imposes on billboards as well. The amendments also include proposed performance standards, and these include things like uh, messaging must be static, so it can't be moving messages or animated messages. There can't be any flashing lights, and each message must be displayed for at least eight seconds. Additionally, uh, the sign must also incorporate automatic dimming devices and uh, include a lighting plan to show that there won't be any glare or extreme lighting onto adjacent properties. And then the for future applicants must also be able to uh, utilize a remote shutdown in the event that the sign is malfunctioning. And then lastly, the proposed amendments, the proposed review procedure for future digital freeway billboards have a number of different entitlements or approvals that future applicants would need to get. They would have to enter into a development agreement with the city. They have to get a conditional use permit and they have to uh, get their design review under what's called a major design review. And there's a number of different findings that each applicant must make in order to get an approval. Additionally, the development agreement must also include provisions for the relocation of existing billboards or the provision of the in-lieu fee. And then also they have to provide one-time fees and also revenue sharing mechanisms with the city uh, to ensure that there is some sort of community benefit uh, that comes along with the proposal. And per city council direction, all revenue that is to be uh, collected from digital freeway billboards through those fees uh, would be used for freeway beautification projects. 
And then we also do want to note that digital freeway billboards uh, also have to obtain separate approval from Caltrans after going through the city process. So um, there, there are additional permit permitting requirements from the state as well. And so if an applicant decided, if the amendments were approved and an applicant decided to apply for a digital freeway billboard, after submitting an applicant, a complete application to the city, uh, the project would then be taken to the city council in order to uh, work out the development agreement and key business points or deal points. And then the project would ultimately go before the planning commission for a recommendation, followed by a final decision with the city council. And so we mentioned that many of the are that the revenue collected from digital freeway billboards would have to be used for freeway beautification. And so this connects to a plan that the city has called the City Gateways Design Master Plan, which was first adopted in the late 1990s and then adopted in, or updated in 2002. This plan contains policies related to billboard development, specifically precluding new billboard development and requiring that any new billboards that are being relocated in the city be confined to an area called the Northeast Growth Area. And so as part of this initiative, in order to reflect those uh, priorities from city council regarding freeway beautification, and also to address those policies regarding billboard development, staff is also, or the city is also updating the city gateways design master plan for the first time in over 20 years. And the plan is now being called the Vacaville Gateways Master Plan to uh, help alleviate some of the worded uh, verbiage in the title. And then also we're revising policies related to billboard development, uh, we're specifically recommending the continuation of removal of static billboards in Vacaville, and then also creating a new policy that allows digital billboards if they provide offsetting community benefits and enhance the freeway experience. And so next steps, we're going to continue to collect public feedback from the community. So we encourage you all to email comments and questions about the project to, a city, to the city. Our contact info will be on the next slide. And then we also want to invite you to a study session with the Planning Commission that will be held in person on March 19th at 6 p.m. at the Vacaville City Council Chambers at Vacaville City Hall. And then uh, following feedback from the community and from the Planning Commission, we will be taking the draft amendments to the sign ordinance and to the gateways plan. We'll be finalizing those, preparing the environmental analysis as required by state law, and then taking it ultimately to the Planning Commission for a recommendation and city council for a final decision. And so that concludes staff's presentation. Uh, my contact information is on the screen here. Uh, feel free to email me or give me a call anytime if you'd like to discuss or have questions about the proposed amendments. And if you want to learn more about the project as well, you can visit cityofactiva.gov slash digital billboards uh, to learn more. And so uh, now is the time for you all. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to use the raise your hand feature on Zoom, uh, and you can do this by clicking uh, reactions or more at the bottom of your screen and using uh, pressing the raise your hand button. Alternatively, if you're on a phone uh, dialing in, you can also press star nine to raise your hand. So is there anybody here who has a question or comment who, um, who would like to speak? And if you're having difficulty using the raise your hand feature as well, just feel free to unmute and then um, I'll go ahead and call on you to um, let you know that you can speak. Hey, Andy, you have a question or comment? Oh, uh, yes, I know. Hi, Albert. Kristen and uh, Payman. Payman, good to see you. So. <laughs> been a while uh so anyway um when you're talking about 65 feet overall um if there's a variation between the grade of the property that the billboard is going to be built on and the height of the freeway uh is it going to be whichever is greater that's a great question and um that's something that we would have to flesh out more as part of this process um it's not something that was considered, so we thank you for bringing it to our attention, and we'll we'll have to flesh that out as we uh, finalize the amendments. Sure, um, you know the standard in most cities, if you take a look at their sign ordinance, is uh, whatever the height may be, 
uh, between grade and freeway and whichever is greater. So that would be a, uh, a good place for you to start. Um, you know that currently the Caltrans uh, distance between digital billboards uh, is currently a thousand feet. Um, so right now you're uh, being a little bit more restrictive at 1500. Um, was that a decision uh, based upon wanting to be more restrictive or was it something that um, you took a look at the Caltrans ordinance and somebody just misinterpreted the uh, the distance that's currently there? Yeah, that's a, also a great question. Um, so we took a variety of different options for um, how we could regulate digital freeway billboards to the city council in December. And the alternative that they ultimately chose um, included um, slightly more restrictive standards. In this case, uh, you can see that through the 1500 feet minimum separation requirement. Okay, good. Um, and then in regards to the 1500 feet, uh, as you know, uh, most cities and also Caltrans, when they're measuring the distance between the digital billboards, uh, they are looking on the same side of the freeway. Um, so is yours going to be 1500 feet on the same side of the freeway in a linear uh, uh, direction versus doing it as a uh, circumference, which would be on both sides of the freeway? Uh, obviously, we as the billboard industry uh, would rather see you do it on one side of the freeway uh, in a linear formation. Yeah, we received a few questions about this, actually, and that's also another detail that we would have to flesh out as we're finalizing these amendments. Okay. All right. um, and then lastly, um, I've got a couple of property owners uh, that have contacted me um, based upon the work that we've done with the uh, nut tree. Uh, and they wanted to know, you know, whether or not they could place digital billboards on their property. Uh, and when I saw the original map, if you could go back to that, Noah, that would be great in the districts that you're going to allow for digital. Um, those property owners happen to be uh, to the west uh, of the northeast growth area. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm a little concerned as I start talking to my property owners uh, in fact, they're west of even the nut tree, uh, that uh, uh, that there is going to be a concern on their part uh, for showing up for the public hearings and so forth to be able to talk more about why can't they build a digital billboard on their property. Yeah, I, I kind of understand that concern. Um, as I mentioned in December, we took a variety of different options to city council, and one of those options did include um, allowing billboard development um, within the inner city, so between Alamo Drive and Leisure Town Road. Uh, but ultimately, the alternative that city council chose was the one that we're pursuing now with Interstate 505 and then the Northeast Growth Area. But um, if there are property owners out there who do have um, questions or concerns about that, we do encourage them to uh, contact staff and then also um, to provide public comments either in writing to me or at the planning commission study session. Um, so that way, at least those comments are out there. Okay. I think that that's really important because you've got some, you know, multi-generational uh, families that live in the Vacaville area uh, that would like to build digital billboards on their property. Um, they have, you know, talked with various uh, uh, government officials and staff uh, and have come to me and basically said, you know, we need to make sure that we can protect our rights. Uh, lastly, in regards to my current client in the marketplace, uh, being the nut tree, uh, the purple line that comes down Interstate 505 and then loops off to the west, um, is that going to include the nut tree for a later date upgrade? I know that uh, a number of staff members have been talking to um, the folks at the nut tree about uh, extending their agreement and then being able to upgrade the uh, digital sign on their property to a larger sign. Uh, I just want to make sure that their rights are protected in your new ordinance, uh, that they will be able to do these things at a later date uh, without having to get a variance or come back to staff and ask for some type of amendments to the, uh, to the project. Payment, you can understand me asking these questions, right? I can understand you asking the questions. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Um, so what do you think, Noah? Yeah, so I can't speak to the existing nut tree sign um, and its status at the moment. Um, but regarding your question about whether or not uh, that Interstate 505 portion would include uh, the nut tree area, um, based on how the ordinance is currently written, it would only be um, anything on 505 north of Vaca Valley, so this section right here, and mm -hmm. anything to the west of that, so on okay. this side of the freeway only. Oh, okay. So it does not come down south where I can see it looping into the to the uh, I-80 there. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, hopefully you guys will address the upgrades uh, and allowing for the nut tree to be able to uh, uh, protect its rights as they currently have uh, a development agreement with the city uh, and a, uh, a, a Caltrans permit. So everything is in place. Uh, Andy, I would I would definitely recommend um, your client to send us something in writing if that's the position they want to take. That that wasn't part of this um, evaluation that that we're doing or what the council directed us to do. So if that's something that they're concerned about, we can definitely take that as a comment and share that with our um, with our in our staff force that you know during the public outreach period. Here's what we heard and here's what the concerns were. But I I don't. We don't have an answer of yes, it's going to be protected or no, it's not. I, we probably need to think about how that sort of fits in with the overall vision that the council's identified. But please make sure they send us something in writing um, that identifies what their concern is and how they see um, that their concerns can be addressed. But please make sure they get us something in writing. Uh, fantastic. Appreciate that. And uh, yes, I will have uh, the next week craft a, uh, uh, a letter and send that over to, uh, to staff. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. That's the end of my questions. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you for those constructive comments. Um, is there anybody else here who has any questions or comments regarding the proposed amendments? Feel free to unmute if you'd like to speak. Okay, so I'm not seeing anybody unmuting or raising their hand. Um, so if nobody else has any other questions or comments, we're going to go ahead and end tonight's community meeting right here. Um, so thank you all for attending tonight. And if you think of any thoughts later or any questions later, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a phone call. Um, I'd be happy to clarify or discuss. Um, and we hope to see you at the Planning Commission study session on March 19th. All right, take care. Good night, Vacaville.